the presidential memorial certificate and three shells from today's rifle volley that were fired in honor of your loved one's honorable and faithful service. Family and friends, this does conclude the military honors portion of our service today. And Ed, if you're ready. Sure. Yes. On behalf of my mother, Patricia Laubach, and all her family, thank you all for coming uh, here today. Um, my father, Balvin, is looking uh, down uh, upon us all in appreciation. Balvin Alfin Laubach was born in 1931 in Spring Hill, Minnesota, during the Great Depression. He was the fourth of six children, and his parents lost everything during the Depression so they moved around a lot. This gave him skills to adapt to different places and situations. Those times were not easy for my father. I think that during these hard times, he developed a foundation for hard work and strong ethics and morals. I never heard him once complain. Looking for a better life, his parents moved the family to California in his early teenage years. Even as a young teenager, he worked hard. While going to school, he maintained two jobs, a paper route, and he worked in, his family, in the family bakery business. He joined the Navy less than three weeks after he turned 17 years old. He was there where he learned the basics of electrical engineering. In the Navy, he spent most of his time on the aircraft carrier USS Midway. As my father always told me, he always had enough cruises to last him a lifetime. After spending four years in the Navy, he moved back to California and completed his education at Loyola University, where he obtained his degree in electrical engineering. While still in college, he met my mother, Patricia O'Brien, as she was a classmate of his sister, Marilyn. On one of their first dates, they were going to get donuts at Dolan Donuts. Do Donuts became an ongoing theme for their anniversaries. Who knew that a date donut would turn into a 66-year-long love affair? In 1957, they had their first child, my sister Casey. After that, I think they wanted one more girl. That is all you know that didn't happen. They had eight straight boys. Growing up in a family of 11 was certainly fun. We never had a dull moment. As you can imagine, it made it difficult to get around in a single car. So my father, being the engineer that he was, bought a 1958 Chevy bus, a real life school bus. Uh, it was like the Partridge family, only better. So um, it, we took the yellow, you know, painted the yellow bus silver and bluish green. Um, we took out all the seats, we put in five bunk beds, a long seat couch that folded into a double bed, a table that dropped down into a playpen, you know, a, a kitchen, a bathroom, but that wasn't enough. He cut a hole on the roof and he made a uh, roof platform with railing around it so we could sleep and look at the stars and go to drive in movies. For work, my father started as electrical engineer at Hughes Aircraft Company. After 10 years or so, he became founder and owner of Laubach Electric Company, where he served as electrical contractor for over 30 years. He lived a faithful Catholic life, and family was the foundation of everything he did. He had 15 grandchildren and three great-grandchildren. As a grandpa, he actively attended many of their sporting events. Baseball was his favorite, and he was an avid Angel fan. This is his rally monkey, and he watched all the Angel games. Rally, I mean, they needed all the rallies they could get, but he was rallying and rallying and rallying the Angels. To, so I keep, I keep this wherever I go. So it's in my car all the time. So this is the, his, his rally monkey. He has two of them. My mom has the other rally monkey. 
He will be remembered for his sense of humor, his fix-it skills, his creative style, his love of baseball, and his fantastic head of hair. Something, obviously, I did not inherit. He was a helper of homework and could fill a large chalkboard in our kitchen with a single math problem. It was solved already in his head, but he wanted to make sure that we already knew, you know, how to get to the answer even though he already knew it. He was very artistic with a keen sense of design. He was always building projects either for the house or for the Laubach electric business. Later on in life, he developed vascular dementia. Yeah. Seven years ago, he was honored as recipient of Patient of the Year at the Alzheimer's Society of Orange County. I always looked up to my father and will always admire him as a dedicated husband and family man with a strong Catholic faith. He will be forever in my heart. I love you, God. Thank everyone for coming. So touching to see you all here paying tribute to Val. And we find comfort in words. And I don't know who's the author of this, but it's helped me and I hope it will help you in the next few weeks or months or years. You shed tears because he is gone, or you can smile because he has lived. You can close your eyes and pray that he will come back. You can, or you can open your eyes and see all that he has left. Your heart can be empty because you can't see him. Or you can be full of love you shared. You can turn your back on tomorrow and live yesterday. Or you can be happy for tomorrow because of yesterday. You can remember him and only that he is gone. Or you can cherish his memory and let it move on. And I wanted to ask Paul, my nephew, to conclude with an Our Father and Hail Mary. Oh, let us begin, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. Our Father, who Lord art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and in the hour of our death. Amen. Father, Son. This does conclude the service here at Riverside National Cemetery. Your loved one's gravesite will be available after 4 p.m. as the actual interment process is done in private. Riverside National Cemetery is open 365 days a year from sunrise to sunset. If you ever come in the future and have trouble locating your loved one's gravesite, we're here to assist during hours and on off hours we do have a kiosk for your convenience at the front administration building. And family, I do want to thank each one of you for allowing me to be here with you today. Thank you, family.